So we're continuing with our partnership allocation problems and it's really important that if you have yet to watch the previous problems and discussion, please do that. In this problem, we have UPIC Fruit Limited Partnership was organized at the beginning of the current year as a UPIC farm where customers can pick various types of fruit fresh from the source. The business was also organized to rent apartment buildings. Blueberry, the general partner, contributed $10 for a 10% interest in profits, losses, and capital, and Strawberry, as a limited partner, received 90% interest in profits, losses, and capital in exchange for capital contribution of $90. The partnership immediately purchased a rental apartment building for $1,000, paying $100 in cash from the two partners, right? The $10 from Blueberry, $90 from Strawberry, so $100 total, and issuing a $900 purchase money note with interest payable currently and a lump sum principal payment due in 20 years. Determine each partner's initial outside basis under each of the following alternatives. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So in the first question, the first series of questions here, we're going to assume it's going to come from this fact pattern here for this piece of information. We're going to assume that the note is recourse, so we're told it's recourse, and the partnership, and Blueberry's general partner, is personally liable on the note. As a limited partner, Strawberry is required to make no additional capital contributions beyond the $90 that he contributed upon formation. Strawberry has no personal liability with respect to the note. All right, so we know looking at capital accounts. When it comes to partnership liability allocation, capital accounts are essential. So let's just go ahead and talk about when on formation, right? They're or organizing this business. Section 721 applies, right? No gain or loss recognized to the partner or partnership on contribution of property for partnership interest. And then we also have section 722 for the outside basis for the partnership and for the partners in their partnership interest, and 723, which is the inside basis that the partnership takes. Thinking about capital accounts of the respective partnership or the partners, I should say, we've got Blueberry and Strawberry. And when it comes to their capital, they both contributed 10, or B contributes 10, Strawberry, or Blueberry contributes 10, B for Blueberry, Strawberry S contributes 90. So keep that in mind, those items, because we're going to be using those items later on. Now, the essential part of this question, because those that amount stays the same, that's not going to change. But what is going to change throughout the problem is we've got this $900 of liability. And under section 752, liability allocation, partnership liability allocation, remember that liabilities go into basis. So that's essential. Now we determine, and we, we focused on this a lot in the previous videos, we determine what kind of liability. We've got a reg 1.752-1 regular liability. It's not contingent. So we ask who bears the economic risk of loss. And we look at things like the partnership agreement, local law, satisfaction presumption, and then we break it down into recourse and non-recourse. Now we're told in this problem, or this part of the problem specifically, we've got recourse liability. There might be some special rules we'd apply these special items of partnership agreement, the local law, satisfaction presumption with additional facts added, but we know that, hey, we're dealing with recourse liability, so we're going to have the five-step construct or hypothetical liquidation, right, end-of-world liquidation where everything is equal to zero, all the assets are equal or worth zero. So we know that's going to play an issue here. Now, one thing about this problem is you're going to see how important it is to stress substantial economic effect in regs 1.704, or the 704 regs, specifically reg 1.704-1. So if you have yet to watch that series of videos, substantial economic effect, you need to go through my partnership allocation, substantial economic effect considerations, because this is essential to understanding this problem as well. You can't understand liability allocation until you understand part until you understand just allocations in general 704. The idea with f the flexibility of subchapter K is that the items of income, gain, loss, deduction are meant to be flexible under subchapter K intended by Congress, but there's been abuse in the past, so section 704 has rules that say, okay, if you have allocations, the way allocations are laid out in the partnership agreement will be respected 
but there there are limitations. And the limitation is there must be substantial economic effect. And we go through substantiality, economic effect. You might remember economic effect. We look at the basic test, alternate test, and we go through that analysis. The basic test is here. The alternate test is here. Now, we've got a limited partnership, so the basic test is not going to work. But the alternate test is going to come into play, and that's going to be an essential element. So go back over those videos, those ideas. If you want to pause the video here and look over this, because a lot of what I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes focuses on these elements. Focuses on the alternate test of substantial economic effect because the idea is a lot of the underlying tones of liability allocation come back to substantial economic effect. All right. So let's go into our problem in more depth. So again, right now, we're just starting with our baseline. We're just going to be allocating this $900 of liability between the general partner, Blueberry, and the limited partner, Strawberry, just simply going off of the information given to us. We know it's a recourse liability. We know that it's recourse. And we know that Strawberry is not required to go below the $90 contributed. Okay? The $90 contributed. So capital account is going to be essential for this problem. So let's go ahead. Again, this is our starting capital here. But let's make this even more clear. We've got blueberry, strawberry, right? Blueberry has $10 capital starting. Strawberry has 90 Now it's a recourse liability. Again, $900 of liability. Because it's recourse, we're going to apply our five steps. So if we go to our five steps, all liabilities are due and payable in full. All right, so we're asked to determine the amount, how to break up this liability on formation. That's what this question is asking. And one thing to note is that we complete this analysis for any specific time. This could be asked at the beginning on formation like we have here. It could be asked you know, down the road, which you have to take into account depreciation and how the book value of the asset and the liability, how it's gone down, all these items. So the question is, how is the liability allocated between these two partners, Blueberry and Strawberry. We know it's recourse, so we go through these five steps. Now, the first thing is we assume that the liabilities are due and payable in full. Now, this is all hypothetical. So we have a $900 liability, so we have to pay off, the partnership's gonna pay off that liability. We also assume that in the second step, all assets become worthless, so now this building is now worth zero. Third, all assets are disposed of for zero dollars. Well, if you look at our building, right, our building was purchased for one thousand. So the book value on formation is one thousand dollars, right? If you do a balance sheet, if we have our assets, our liabilities, and again our capital, well, the asset, the only asset we have is this building. And the tax basis is going to be 1000 and the book amount, book value, is also going to be 1000 The liability is 900 And then capital, right now, we have B and S, what we just broken down, 10 and 90 that was, That's what our balance sheet would look like right now. So this building, which is a book value of 1000 now is worth zero. So we're selling it for zero. In step four, the partnership has a loss of 1,000, right? They're selling a book value building of 1,000 for zero. So now it is a $1,000 loss. And then finally, the partnership liquidates. So it has to pay off everything. And it has to follow the partnership agreement in accordance to how everything is broken out. So now we go back to our analysis, looking at our facts again. Right, we know that Blueberry has a 10% interest in profits, losses, and capital. Strawberry has a 90% interest in profits, losses, and capital. And if we go back to our capital account analysis, right, they started at 10 and 90. We've got a $1,000 loss. The question is, how is that $1,000 loss allocated? Well, according to the partnership agreement, it'd be allocated to B and Strawberry, Blueberry and Strawberry. 10%, so minus 100 to blueberry, minus 100 to strawberry, I'm sorry, minus 900, right, 90% to strawberry. And then at the end of the day, after allocating the loss, blueberry would have negative 90 and strawberry would have negative 810. And then that would be $900 that they would each have to con 
or blueberry would have to contribute 90, strawberry would have to contribute 810. That $900 would then go to pay off the liability of 900 going with our steps, our rules. So the partnership pays off the liability, but really comes out of the pockets of Blueberry and Strawberry. Now, what we just did, that capital account analysis, you're looking at that and you're saying, wait, wait, how is that possible? Strawberry is only required to make up the $90 contributed. So Strawberry cannot go negative in the capital accounts. And you're right. Strawberry cannot go negative. So with that, that's very important. That means that this analysis is incorrect. This is not correct. And it goes to the idea, again, of substantial economic effect. If you think about this, this allocation or this idea of allocation on this event, this loss, it would not be respected under the, the basic or the alternate test. Both of them would fail. So then what would happen? Well, assuming, let's assume that that the we follow capital accounts and we liquidate in accordance with positive capital account balances. So then we go to the all we don't meet the basic test because we're a limited partnership. We go to the alternate test. Well, number two, strawberry cannot go below zero. We're going below zero on this loss. So then we go down here to certain determinations. Well, under Reg 1.704-1B33 little i's, we got the certain determinations test. Assuming substantiality is met, well, that's fine. We're good for substantiality purposes. In terms of our actual analysis economically, what would really happen here? What would really happen here? Well, strawberry would only have to go to zero, right? So strawberry would simply just lose $90 of the $1,000 $1, total loss. So that would just be 90 because, again, strawberry can only go to zero balance, can't go below that. So the idea is that the certain determinations test would apply under the substantial economic effect because again strawberry cannot go below zero so under certain determinations under the partnership agreement because blueberry is a general partner and has unlimited deficit restoration that remaining 910 of that loss would come from blueberry so the capital accounts would really look like blueberry strawberry start off with 1090 we've got a thousand dollars of loss that needs to be allocated that thousand dollars of loss we broken nine ten to blueberry and ninety to strawberry in that direction. Again, applying our economic ideas, which remember with partnership liability allocation, partnership agreement is essential and local law, right? Being that uh, blueberry is a general partner and can go negative, um, whatever amount, unlimited def unlimited deficit restoration. So then in capital accounts, blueberry would have a negative nine hundred. And strawberry would have zero. So that nine hundred dollars is where the liability that's owed, or the payment of the of the money borrowed, that nine hundred dollars would then go to the lender in that order. So blueberry actually makes up paying all of it. So for this part of the problem, the entire nine hundred dollars of the liability is allocated blueberry and then zero to strawberry. So if we're looking at our basis, so remember capital account is essential, but you also need to focus on the adjusted bases of the partner's um, uh, outside basis in the partnership. So with respect to this problem, right, we've got blueberry and strawberry. They started with a 10 and 90. That's the same with the capital. It's also the same for um, under 722. Then we've got the liability allocation, right? So we got our 722 on formation. We've got our liability under 752. Blueberry takes all 900. Strawberry gets none. So we've got $90 outside basis to strawberry and a 910 outside basis to blueberry. And that is what it is starting off. Okay, so now let's continue with the facts. Now we're going to consider a change in the facts. So we still stick with the fact that it's recourse. Now we're switching over. What if under the partnership agreement, Strawberry as limited partner is obligated to contribute an additional $900 to the partnership in future, making the total capital from Strawberry $990? So what this is saying, going back to our ideas of substantial economic effect, is we go through our analysis, again, assuming that we meet the capital account um, basic test, there's a positive capital account, I'm sorry, assuming we follow capital accounts, we liquidate in accordance with positive capital account balances, and there's a QIO, we can meet the alternate test. 
However, we saw in the previous part of the problem that we cannot go below zero. Well, now the problem is saying, okay, well, we're changing around the facts, and now blueberry, I'm sorry, strawberry can only go negative 900 in the capital counts. So strawberry can go negative 900. That's specifically where this is coming from. So that means that strawberry contributed 90, and then if strawberry loses 900 because of negative capital counts, technically loses 990 total. So now if we go back and redo our analysis, hey, our original analysis, guess what? Our original analysis that we did, that actually works. So our original analysis that we did actually works. So I'm going to, re, I'm going to put that back up. We go through the same five steps. We go through the same five steps. If we go through those same five steps, right, step one, we have to pay off all our, our loans. We have a $900 liability. Step two, the assets become worthless, right, zero. Step three, the assets are sold for $0. We only have one asset, the building. Step four, we allocate the losses. So we have a $1,000 loss that's allocated 90% to strawberry, 10% to blueberry, and that's going to be fine according to our positive, with our um, substantial economic effect because, again, now strawberry can go negative, negative 900, so that works out, which gives us negative 90, negative 810, and, again, strawberry is allowed to go negative 900, so that's fine, and that is going to be how the $900 liability is made up, 810 out of pocket from strawberry, 90 from blueberry, so that is how we break up the liability, 9810. So this analysis we did earlier in the previous, this is actually no longer the case because the above works. The above works. We're going to split the liability between blueberry and strawberry. We're going to give uh, 90 of that 900 to blueberry. So 90 to blueberry and 810 of that to strawberry. So we're calculating our basis for purposes of the, outs, the uh, outside basis of the partners. We're going to recalculate that, and that's going to be 90, 90 to blueberry, 810 to strawberry, and calculating the basis again because the liability amounts. And then we have 100 to blueberry, 900 strawberry, and that is their outside basis for, with respect to that part of the problem. All right, so now let's continue on. We've just gone through that. The next part of the question says, continuing with our recourse liability, what if strawberry has assumed and promised to pay the entire note as it becomes due? Assume that the holder of the mortgage could proceed directly directly against strawberry as well as blueberry and the partnership if the note is not paid. Also, assume that if the holder of the mortgage sued Blueberry or Strawberry for payment, Blueberry and the partnership would sue Strawberry for the same amount since Strawberry's assumption made him ultimately liable on the debt. All right, so we're still a recourse liability. Let's go down and look at, again, our rules for liabilities. So we're still asking who bears the economic risk of loss. We're still focusing on recourse liabilities. We know that. So we're still under the five-part test. However, when it comes to determining who bears the economic risk of loss, we've looked at the partnership agreement. We know local law, right? We know that Blueberry is a general partner and unlimited liability. There's also the idea of satisfaction presumption. The satisfaction presumption deals with things like guarantees, indemn indemnification, pledges. Guarantees are when a party, one of the partners or multiple partners says, okay, well, if the partnership doesn't make good or other partners don't make good, then I will be responsible ultimately. Indemnification is like a reimbursement policy, and pledging is when you use property against the actual property itself. Now, the satisfaction presumption says that the parties are going to make good. So if it's a recourse liability, then we're going to assume the parties are going to make good. So that means that guarantees of recourse liabilities, guarantees are virtually ignored, especially bottom dollar guarantees where it's like the additional, okay, the last amount I will... Uh, guarantee. Like if you have a $5 million uh, mortgage, I'll guarantee the last million if other people don't pay, you know, any, any amount. That's a bottom dollar guarantee. Indemnification though is a little different 
So indemnification is basically a, a side contract where it's saying, okay, well, the parties, they might, we might, under the partnership agreement or the rules of law, local law, there might be one set of, of rules of how this liability, but the other parties might be able to sue the other party to get their money back. That's exactly what we have here. This is similar to an indemnification. So again, think about what's going on. Yes, the liability is still recourse, which under recourse, that means that someone bears the economic risk, blueberry and strawberry. And yes, under state law, blueberry is a general partner and responsible for making up unlimited deficit. But we're told specifically, and this is the key language, that if the holder of the mortgage sued Blueberry or the partnership for the payment, Blueberry and the partnership would sue Strawberry basically as a reimbursement. So Strawberry is the one ultimately liable. So what this means is that in this problem specifically, because of that language, even holding aside the capital accounts and the substantial economic effect that we've done already, that is the partnership agreement analysis. Holding that aside, just doing this, this is pretty much saying that, hey, this is a recourse liability solely to Strawberry. And the idea is that Strawberry ultimately would have to make up, if you think about any type of situation, right, where if, if the lenders, if you go through all these steps, just think about the steps, right? Recourse, we go through the five steps. All liabilities are due and payable in full. Okay, so $900 liabilities due. The assets are worthless. Or the building's worthless with $1,000 loss. Well, guess what? That liability would ultimately be borne by Strawberry in this situation because, yes, even if under the partnership agreement, Blueberry is responsible for a part of it, Blueberry is going to sue Strawberry for whatever amount. So that means in this part of the question, all 900, I'm not even going to do the capital account analysis here because this one is pretty straightforward. All 900 of the liability is allocated to Strawberry. All 900 of that is allocated to Strawberry. So we're going to go ahead and give Strawberry the 900, Blueberry none, and then we're going to do the, uh, the basis again, the basis um, calculation, the adjusted basis, the outside basis. Right? We start off of our 722 amount for the partners. And now we're going to add in Strawberry's $900 liability, Blueberry zero. So now Blueberry starts off a $10 basis, Strawberry of a $990 basis, just like that. Okay, so that is that part of the question. That one's pretty straightforward after you've, done, you've gone through and you analyze the other parts of the questions. Pretty straightforward. Now let's, let's take a look at the last part of the question. What if Strawberry has guaranteed the note in a side agreement directly with the holder of the mortgage. All right, so let's go back to our chart. We actually just talked about this. We talked about indemnification and guarantees. And remember, if it's a recourse liability, it's a guarantee under the satisfaction presumption, which is in the regs um, for 1.752, specifically 752-2, the satisfaction presumption says, all right, we know that it's a recourse liability, which means that both Blueberry and Strawberry are on the hook. And we went through that analysis, that original analysis. Okay, so going back to our original analysis, we said, okay, well, Strawberry cannot go below uh, zero, right? So we're going back to the original fact pattern. Strawberry cannot go below zero. So even though Strawberry is guaranteeing it, the satisfaction presumption says, but we pretty much are going to ignore that because think about it. It's a hypothetical. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't have a crystal ball. We can't see into the future. So the idea here is that blueberry and strawberry are going to make good. So the guarantee is not going to become that important in this analysis. It's going to be ignored. So we're going to apply just like we did before the original facts, right? So we're going back to our original. And in that situation, that's the one where... Um, Blueberry was allocated all 900, strawberry zero, and the reason why was because remember strawberry could not go go below zero, so we had to allocate that out. We gave um, in the end strawberry had a zero balance, blueberry had a $900 balance, and that's how we allocated. And all 900 went to blueberry in that order, and then we gave um, for purposes of the adjusted basis, blueberry got 900, so it was 910. Strawberry had a 90 basis. Boom, that was exactly how we allocated. All right, so that is recourse. So next, we're gonna go, we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna change, um, I'm gonna change the color of the font because now we're gonna talk about non-recourse liabilities. So the analysis we did for recourse and the idea 
of partnership tax liability allocation. That's good, and a lot of that is also going to apply to the similar ideas of non-recourse as well, but there is some sense, some very big differences. All right, so we're moving down now, and just like with the last part of the problem, we still have the same facts at the top, but now the note, we're assuming the note is non-recourse, meaning that it's secured by the apartment building, but neither the partnership nor the partners have any personal liability. So even though um, Blueberry is a, limit, a general partner and under state law goes can go negative and have to do unlimited deficit, it's still a non-recourse note, so Blueberry is not required to pay out of pocket. The lender is the one bearing the risk. The lender bears the risk here, and that's the reason why the property is secured by – or the loan is secured – by the property. So if the, basically the loan, if there's a default here, the lender is going to take that property, take that building. That's the idea. So first things first, let's go through and we're going to analyze doing the capital account analysis just like we've done before. Okay. We're going to first determine how, just in this plain vanilla pack, fact pattern, how to break up the liabilities. Okay. And the, the, the um, balance sheet still stays the same. That's all good. The 722 analysis still stays the same, but now we're going to do our capital accounts over here. I'm going to use red, red font. All right. We have our capital account analysis. We've still got blueberry and strawberry, still blueberry general partner, strawberry limited, limited partner, but now we're talking about um, how they are, um, it's a non-recourse liability, so neither of them has to go out of pocket with respect to this liability if, if they default. So they start with 10 and 90 capital account balance, and we're told specifically it's a non-recourse liability. So with, our, with respect to our analysis, right, we come down, it's a 1.752-1 liability, normal liability. It's not a 752-7 contingent liability. Who bears the economic risk of loss? We're told it's non-recourse, but we are going to need to worry about some of these additional issues. Now, our partnership agreement, local law, satisfaction, presumption later on, okay? But right now, it's just a plain situation. So reg 1.752-3 deals with non-recourse liabilities, and it's a waterfall rule. A waterfall rule means you start at the top and you allocate in accordance with the steps until you get down and there's nothing left, and it goes all to step three at the bottom. So the first part is, is the PMG. If there's any PMG, we allocate that between the partners in accordance with the rules of allocating PMG under reg 1.704-2. Now, I have the substantial economic effect, Reg 1.704-1, rules here. I've got the 1.704-2 non-recourse deduction rules here. So remember, with respect to the non-recourse deduction rules, we go through the analysis, and there's a lot of um, overlap with Reg 1.704-1 with the alternate basic test. But remember all of this this um, the minimum gain chargeback, uh, reg 1.704-2e, additional requirements has to be within the range, all that stuff, that's essential for this element as well because however the PMG is allocated with respect to these rules, you're going to follow how that PMG is going to be allocated with respect to the non with the liability allocation for PMG purposes as well. So you're going to need to go back over this. If you have not gone over this, please stop the video and go through the video I have on non-recourse deductions. It all fits together like a big puzzle. But keep in mind these rules. You go through the basic alternate test in Reg 1.704-1, and then you continue with some additional rules in uh, dash 2, and we allocate the PMG based on the partner's shares. We go through that analysis, keeping track, and we need that keeping in mind with, with these steps as well. All right, so keep that in mind. So we're going back to our partnership tax liability allocation, and that's the first part is the PMG. PMG only pops up, by the way, when the book value is less than the liability. So we saw that in our, in our discussion of non-recourse deductions as well, right, of non-recourse deductions. Right here at the top, one of the first questions is, is, is if the adjusted basis or um, – so I said book value. That's, I, I'll go back and change that. It's actually adjusted basis. When the adjusted basis is less than the liability, that's when these rules pop into place. But if the adjusted basis is greater than or equal to liability, you don't got PMG. You're applying Reg 1.704-1 rules, concepts. Okay? So um, book value – and for, for the problems I do in this topic – 
in, par in my partnership tax, the adjusted basis and the, and the book value equal because the depreciation systems and whatnot, um, they're the same. I make them equal for the, for the years, although in practice that could change. So it's really the, um, the adjusted basis that you focus on, not the book value. But again, um, you might have a teacher like me that they equal in your respective problems. So that's only when PMG pops up. If you have no PMG, you continue, and you have 704C pre-contribution gain. And we talked about that. We talked about that with Reg 1.704-3. I don't have a chart on that, but I do have a video on that where it goes over the uh, rules and the steps on allocating. What you see there is when you have a respective, um, when you have someone that contributes property to the partnership with a built-in gain. So built-in gain. So you contribute to the partnership, built-in gain. You got to worry about that respective item. Okay? Built-in gain. Um, if there's no property being contributed like we have here in our situation, so here the partnership buys the property. The partners contribute cash. The partnership goes out and it buys it afterwards. So they use that cash, right? We're told from the facts that the business immediately purchased, right? The partnership immediately purchased a rental apartment building. We're told that, that piece of information. So there's no pre-contribution gain because no partner contributed that. That would be if the partner contributed. You have to allocate that 704C pre-contribution gain portion, which is a liability amount minus the adjusted basis at that time to that respective owner. Let's take a look at our facts. Just and we, We've looked at them before, but just to remember, again, what's going on here. So we're looking at with respect to how to break up this $900 liability between blueberry and strawberry. So that's what the question ultimately is. Yes, we determine the, the basis and all that. But at formation, right, our adjusted basis in the property is $1,000 and the liability is $900. Is $900. So the adjusted basis is greater than or equal to the liability liability and because of that that means that we have no PMG at this time we've also got no pre-contribution gain because again the partnership purchased the property the partners did not do it it have to be contributed by a partner so that means that all one thousand dollars of the I'm sorry all nine hundred dollars of the liability is going to be excess non-recourse liability it's going to be step three now with respect to this one there's three different ways you can allocate, and it's really whatever the partnership agreement states or does not state. We can use the profit ratio, which is the default rule, which, by the way, that rule is what we use if there's nothing, if it's silent. There's some limitations on that, but generally speaking, it's very rare to have a limitation on that. The second method is that we can use the NRD ratio, which is the non-recourse deduction ratio, which goes back to how we broke up non-recourse deductions for this idea, this concept. Right, uh, non-recourse deductions under Reg 1.704-2. Again, needs to be specified in the partnership agreement. You're going to do so. And then the last one is the additional method, which is very rare. It does occasionally happen, which you basically allocate in a preference order. First, the contributor with any 704C gain minus the 704C minimum gain. So it goes back to this idea here, number two, and it gives some additional element in, a, in an ordering manner. Okay, so let's look at our facts. Our facts say nothing. We're not told specifically how to allocate this. If you go back in the facts and you read all the facts up here, there's nothing that says in the partnership agreement how non-recourse, excess non-recourse liabilities um, should be allocated. There's nothing specifically that says that. And because of that, we're also told here nothing. We're going to be using for the excess, if we do get to the excess, which we do because again, number one, number two, we don't have in this problem. We're going to be using the profit ratio. Okay. So let's just start off with our basics. So non-recourse deduction, um, we go through those three waterfalls, right? First PMG, we've got no PMG because the adjusted basis, which is 1,000 in the building, is greater than the liability that's securing, that's um, related to it and secured by it. Um, so that, there's no PMG. Again, that's uh, level one of the waterfall, zero, right? We got one, two, and three of our waterfall. One is PMG. PMG is zero. Our waterfall means we start off with 900. We've got to allocate that out to the levels. Number two is a 704C. Well, no one contributed, so that's also zero, right? The partnership bought it. So that means our excess rule is going to be 900. Remember, we've got the three different rules. we got the profit rule. We've got the um, NRD rule, and then we've got the additional rule. 
Well, it's not the NRD rule, the additional rule, because the partnership agreement does not specify, so it's going to be the profit rule. So we go back to our partnership agreement, and we look to see how profits are allocated. We look for profits, right? We've got profits for blueberry are 10%. Profits for strawberry are 90%. So right there, that is what we're going to use. We're going to allocate this $900 liability, 10 and 90, using the profit ratio. So that's going to be uh, 90 to blueberry and 8, 10 to strawberry, right? And that's going to be how we allocate the amount of the liability. So yes, we look at our capital accounts like we've done in the past, but at this point, we don't have to do the five steps. We don't have to look at that loss allocation like we did for recourse. So we can now calculate our adjusted basis with respect to blueberry and strawberry, right? We have our 722 starting amount, which is the 10 and the 90. And now we can allocate this liability. So the liability will be allocated um, under this rule, 90 to blueberry and uh, 8, 10 to strawberry in that order. So we're going to have a final adjusted basis of 100 and 900, and that's our basis. So now we're going to go through and change around some of the facts. we got three different little alternatives. Let's go ahead and do that. So next, it says, what if Strawberry pledged Big Apple stock with a basis of 100, value of 200, to secure the loan? All right. So let's go back to our, our analysis for uh, 752 analysis. Right, we're still a 1.752-1 liability. We're asking who bears the economic risk of loss. Again, we know it's non-recourse, but we gotta go through some issues. Right, we focus on the partnership agreement, local law, satisfaction presumption. We've got this idea of pledges. So if we are pledging and it's a recourse liability, the pledge will be ignored, just like a guarantee. But a guarantee and a pledge for a non-recourse liability will be respected. So because this is non-recourse, we're going to use the fair market value. And what we do is this is an ordering. This is an ordering concept. We're going to take the, the liability. So I'm going to draw a little arrow here with respect to this respective uh, question about the pledging. We have a $900 liability. The idea is that with a non-recourse liability, no one bears the economic risk of loss. So... The lender cannot go after anybody. He can take the property, right? It's secured by the property, but they can't go after anybody. But now Strawberry is pledging stock, which means that the, um, the lender can go after Strawberry with respect to the stock, take Strawberry stock, sell it, take the proceeds, and also take the property as well, making sure that they get the $900. So that means that the first $200 of the liability, because of this pledge, is considered a recourse. So we're going to subtract away the 200 from the pledge. We use a fair market value, right? We focus on fair market value. That's the important part, not the stock. I'm sorry, not the uh, basis. The remaining $700 is now considered non-recourse because no one, the, the uh, lender cannot go after anyone specifically. They can just take the property. So we're going to go ahead and do this analysis again. We now have $700 here. $700 left is non-recourse liability. So let me erase a few starting. We've got no PMG because the liability amount is 900 and the basis is 1,000. So 1,000 is greater than or equal to, one to 900. So there's no PMG, no 704C because the partnership uh, purchase property wasn't contributed. So the excess is $700. So we're allocating this $700 amount. I'm going to go back here. This $700 amount between blueberry and strawberry as non-recourse as an excess. And because the partnership agreement is silent, we're going to use the profit ratio, which remember is 10%, 90%. So that means that blueberry is allocated of the non-recourse liability. Blueberry is allocated, 10% uh, of 700 is 70. Strawberry is allocated 90% uh, of 700, which is 630. And then if we go back, remember this pledge, this is recourse with respect to strawberry. So that right there is 200 for strawberry plus strawberries 630. So strawberry in total is allocated 830. And of course, blueberry is just a 770. So blueberry is a 70. So if we go back and we reallocate this 900 like we've been doing, and these other elements, we can, we can change the basis, the liability amount, down here, calculate the adjusted basis. 
We've got 70 broken to blueberry and 830 to strawberry. Remember, we did that on the side over there. And the adjusted basis, we recalculate that. That's going to be 70, 830. So the adjusted basis in the end of the day, after putting in the 722 in the liability portion, we've got 80 and we've got, um, this is uh, 920. 80 and 920, just like that. Okay. So next, what if Strawberry guaranteed the note in a side agreement with the holder? So we did this earlier. We talked about side agreements with recourse here, right? We talked about it right here of recourse. So it's very important to understand that with these guarantees, we've got a guarantee here, we've got a guarantee here. When we had the guarantee earlier of the recourse liability, it was ignored because of the satisfaction presumption, right? Because for recourse liability, we assume the parties are going to make good. With a non-recourse liability, it's different because, again, economically, a non-recourse liability, the lender bears the economic risk because if the, if the parties default, the lender can, cannot go after anybody. Well, now it changes things significantly because with a guarantee, the lender can go after a party because they do have some skin in the game. So the question is always, who bears the economic risk of loss? So thinking about that, this changes things significantly. So now, because it's a non-recourse liability, which again, the lender is the one that bears the economic risk of loss, now that Strawberry guarantees it, guess what? The entire $900, the entire $900 is going to be allocated to Strawberry because that guarantee now takes precedence because again, if you think about things economically, assume that the... Um, the business did not pay, defaulted. The, well, guess what? The lender would go after Strawberry. And we can't use the, the uh, satisfaction presumption because of a non-recourse liability. Even if they could make good, why would, why, why would they? Why would Blueberry ever pay economically? Blueberry is not required to because it's a non-recourse. It's not a recourse liability. So that non-recourse liability is going to be allocated, again, all 900 to strawberry and zero to blueberry. So let's go ahead and write that in and also change around this basis and calculate our new basis amount. Let's go ahead and do that. So we got zero to blueberry, 900 to strawberry. And again, we do the same thing here. Blueberry zero, strawberry 900. We've got 10 and 990. And that is how we would allocate it in that situation. All right, we've got one left and then we're done with the problem. What if Strawberry guarantees, another guarantee, but this is not a, a whole guarantee. It is a, a minimum of $200. This is known as a bottom dollar guarantee. The way I like to describe bottom dollar guarantees, and you could have this for recourse or non-recourse, but bottom dollar guarantees, it's like usually the last $200 is the last amount. Usually they'll say, oh yeah, you have a $5 million um, recourse or non-recourse liability, I'm going to guarantee the last million. So if the lender only gets four million by you know the property, then I'll guarantee the remaining. That's kind of the idea. So let's think about it here. The idea here is with a non-recourse liability, the lender, so let's say partnership defaults, does not pay. The lender would then take the property. Let's say the property has gone down significantly in value. Well, if the lender does not get all $900 that it's owed, it could go after strawberry for whatever amount didn't go up to the $900. That's the idea. Now, these bottom dollar guarantees are tough because if you think about it, we don't know what's going to happen. The property could go up in value, go down, right? So it might not actually be satisfied. It's, it's, not, a, a hold, it's not a hold harmless in all situations type of situation where a guarantee is a little bit different because they could go after them regardless. They could go after with respect to the amount that's owed. So a bottom dollar guarantee, the rules, and just like the satisfaction presumption where um, that's just one possible alternative where, you know, we could, Treasury, IRS, and the regulations could have gone different ways. They could have said, oh, yeah, you know, if a guarantee, we're going to make that, you know, priority over other situations, even recourse. But that's not what they do for recourse. They say satisfaction presumption. We're going to assume the parties are going to make good in the future. Guarantees, right, whole guarantees are different from bottom dollar. Bottom dollar, the regulations, the IRS has decided to pretty much ignore. When you've got these situations where it's a minimum amount that's going to be guaranteed but not the whole thing, you basically ignore it for recourse and non-recourse. So in this situation, this guarantee is going to be ignored, which brings us back to our original situation, right, where we had the non-recourse $900, right, no pledging or anything. So we, had, we go through the analysis again. We've got a $900 liability, and we allocate that out. 
we allocate that between between the owners and that $900 amount then goes all the way down to the profit amount and that would be um, an excess because there wouldn't be any PMG or 704C so it's allocated based on profits so 900 so we do 10% 90% so $90 to blueberry 810 to strawberry and then we allocate we add that to the basis which brings blueberries basis to 100 strawberries basis to 900 just like that right so just like we did in the earlier part of the problem where it was just a regular non-recourse all right so i hope you've enjoyed this remember we've gone through a lot of stuff here there's a lot of different situations you see and there could be um these are really the main ones the main situations you see when it comes to liability issues, guarantees, pledges, recourse versus non-recourse, how you do things, how you apply it with looking at um, the 752 rules as well as the um, substantial economic effect rules as well as the non-recourse deduction rules. And you see how everything kind of fits into place. All of these rules from 704 non-recourse deductions, from substantial economic effect, from 752, they all fit into play here. So when you're doing your analysis, when you're going through an exam question, you got to go through and analyze all these items. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. Definitely want to go back and re-look over these, these um, specific examples. It's going to help you tremendously. Um, please watch the other videos on this topic as well as other partnership tax videos that I've provided for you.